Good morning, everybody. Welcome back. I am so happy to meet you again in this series, the first one, Greater Rule of Critical Care Ultrasound in Management of Severe COVID-19 ARDS, Case 1. First, we are all learning from COVID-19. I can say from the cases I've seen that you can expect any cause of cardiopulmonary derangement as a possible cause of your patient deterioration and you will see that in the coming cases. Very clear. During my presentation, I will say attention please for any sign I believe we should take care of. Let us start. A 60-year-old male patient was admitted to medical department because of COVID-19 pneumonia. Three days later, he was admitted to our ICU because of severe shortness of breath, respiratory rate 40 per minute, auto saturation 88% on 15 liter non-breathing mass. He was fully conscious, happy, hemodynamic blood pressure 120 over 65, heart rate 95 per minute regular chest bilateral crackle all over, heart S1, S2, abdomen soft legs. Investigation, apart from the keep rising D-dimer from 0.5 to 1.3 mg per liter and LDH reaching 323, lymphocytes in the low side, all investigation were within normal limit, ABG, severe hypoxemia on, on 1500 non-breathing mass, uh, severe hypoxemia or mixed respiratory and metabolic acidosis. This is the X-ray, bilateral infiltrate. We used to do critical care ultrasound in all our COVID-19 patients on admission and the daily to follow up the progress and with any deterioration of the patient condition. First, in fear vena cava. In this patient, Subcostal view was very difficult because of a lot of gases, and this is common really in COVID because of stress. And you see here we access the inferior vena cava from the liver. It is full, mildly collapsing, with full dilated hepatic vein, and this is very important point. We'll talk it. We'll talk about uh, in the coming uh, slides. Second, the lung. Really, for all lung ultrasound of COVID patients I've seen and follow, it is interstitial pneumonia. It is interstitial pneumonia. I didn't find bad consolidation and hepatization in the COVID patient. There will be seeking serrated subpleural consolidation of the pleura, dense B-line, B line may be dense, may be less dense, may be A line, may be spurred area, like any viral pneumonia, really. And this is good news. We will see that later on. This is a case of H1N1. We saw a lot of H1N1 in our career in the previous years. You see, this was in 215. And this is uh, our patient. Uh, a few days uh, ago, you see, sick pleura, sick pleura, dense B line, dense B line, maybe pleura more sick in, in COVID patient than ARDS, but, uh, than H1N1, but H1N1 always have sick pleura, subpleural consolidation and B line. This is the picture we used to see in H1N1 and the viral pneumonia as well. Okay. In our patient, it was widespread process, it's not localized, most of the area of the lung are affected, and as you see here, there's sick pleura and subpleural consolidation, then sibili, sick pleura, then sibili, and you see here, subpleural consolidation, this is hypodense area below the pleura, with serrated irregular edge and density line. For our patient, it is dense, condensed B line almost all over.
it is condensed B line almost all over the lung with some spared area. If you remember the lung water score, this condensed B line you will give score two, four. Less dense and separated B line you will give score one, and for A line you will give score zero. For hepatization, you will give a score 3. For our patient, almost all the area, you are talking about a 12 area, it is almost 2. That means the lung score is 24 over 36, and this is too bad for a patient. And this is per se, give you a clue that your patient is suffering a lot, despite he has been happy. This is sick pleura. You see here some spared area, here a lines, and there is sick pleura, dense villi. But it is interstitial pneumonia as we used to see in the previous corona, mers cov and in the previous H1N1 pneumonia. <coughs> Third, the heart. Heart is very important in a COVID patient. You see here, long axis barasternal view, contracting wheel, short axis baras, uh, barasternal view, contracting wheel, the image is not clear because you know patient is tachypneic and a lot of air in the lung and the air is the enemy of ultrasound okay but you can get an idea about the heart here the heart is contracting with for for a chamber view it's very, for a chamber view you can see despite the blurred video that right side is not normal it is almost more in diameter than the left side. It's very important. That means this ARDS making or causing pulmonary vasoconstriction because of hypoxia, which lead to pressure overload on the right side, and the right side became dilated. There is another very important point here, and I will clarify in the next slides. You see up and down move to the right ventricle, it's good. And this is good news. Up and down move to the right ventricle is good, and this is good news. Let us see TAPSI. Attention, please. In all patient of COVID ARDS and right ventricular strain, I have seen there is good TAPSI. Despite dilatation of the right ventricle, there is good TAPSI, and this is good news. Because our experience with systemic fat embolization of sickle cell disease, it caused sudden blockage of the pulmonary circulation and the cause failure of the right ventricle and the very bad TAPSI, and this is very bad prognosis. But in COVID, the cases I've seen, maybe other cases, for limited experience of mine with the COVID patient and as you, as you will see, the next cases, almost all cases I have seen, there is good TAPSI, and this is good news. That means it is subacute course. It is not sudden course. It's subacute course. Give the right ventricle chance to compensate, and this is very good news to have. Will contracting right ventricle despite dilatation. Attention, please, number one. Force diaphragm. Diaphragm is very important here because, as you hear from the great paper of Gattanoni, which divided the types of ARDS to L and H, and in the L type with good compliance and low elastance, they suggest to follow up or to confirm the work of breathing, the increased work of breathing by looking for swing of the CVB. If there is swing of the CVB very much, more than 15 centimeter water, that means this patient is doing too much breathing and this may harm the lung and cause patient-induced lung injury. Diaphragm, you can see the execution of the diaphragm and can give you a clue about the work of breathing of the patient execution of the frame and it's very simple and non-invasive and you can detect the patient with work of breathing very easy for this patient as you see and if you did 
If you apply the M mode, you will see this excursion very easy. And from the excursion, you can determine the work of breathing. If too much excursion, that means too much work doing by the patient. This is attention number two. As you see here, the excursion here is normal, 1.77. In some patient, I saw the excursion very slow and very low value, denoting exhaustion of the patient. Fix the kidney. Kidney is very important. Fix the kidney. Kidney is very important. Let us see first this ARDS patient with high score lung water, severe hypoxemia, right ventricular strain, and right ventricular dilatation, and systemic pulmonary congestion. You will see here the hepatic vein is dilated. Inferior vena cava is dilated. What do you think is this blood going back to? It's going back to the kidney. Attention, please. You see here? You see here? This is the color flow of the hepatic... Of, sorry. This is the color flow of the renal vein. Too much flow, back flow of the kidney. Too much back flow in the venous system of the kidney. And this is I saw in all patients with COVID. In all patients I have seen, there is too much backflow because of pulmonary congestion, which is uneventable in this patient with severe hypoxemia, ARDS, ventricular strain, and moreover, after mechanical ventilation with both pressure ventilation, high beam, uh, uh, high uh, uh, with both pressure ventilation and a beep in the high side, you will see this venous congestion and I believe it's very important factor causing renal impairment in COVID patient and other factor like affection of the kidney by the virus and like decrease blood flow of the kidney from the obstructive shock and septic shock of the COVID. Obstructive shock of the right ventricular strain. It's very important here. You see inferior vena cava is dilated, hepatic vein is dilated and the blood back to the kidney making this Fat renal circulation, right? Renal venous circulation, which back, with back pressure of the kidney causing renal impairment. This is very important factor, I believe. As you see here, the venous flow, it's almost like arterial flow. Yeah? It's venous flow, tumor fluctuating with breathing. As you see here, it's too much back flow of the kidney and too much congestion of the kidney. And as you see, the systolic flow also is not good compared to systolic flow. As you see here, the systolic flow compared to systolic flow, that means this kidney has hemodynamic derangement, hemodynamic compromise of the kidney. You should consider as a cause of renal impairment in this patient because almost all cases I saw this venous congestion of the kidney. Attention, please. Really, the patient was happy despite all of this. He was raising his thumb by wind side, but we are not happy by high lung water score, 24, dilated right side, increased work breathing, we are not happy. I don't know, maybe something central makes the patient happy, but definitely the patient, what we saw objectively by critical kill ultrasound, make us not happy about this patient. We prepare for mechanical ventilation, and surprisingly, before intubation, the patient before intubation, the patient, intubating the patient, and the spot rate almost 55. He was rising the wind sign by his thumb. Patient was sedated and fully paralyzed and intubated according to our COVID-19 intubation protocol. As you see here, he is tachypnic, but this, he was sleeping, sleeping and happy, not distressed with non breathing mask. Attention, please. These patients really have very high respiratory drive and it will be impossible to ventilate without full control of his breath. This is very important because definitely will go on auto beep if you try to ventilate him awake or mildly sedated. Very difficult to ventilate the patient because of high respiratory drive which lead to auto beep. Patient was connected to mechanical ventilation BRBC mode, tidal volume 8 liter per kg, good compliance, B breached to 12, 
driving pressure 14 if i do initially 100 ie ratio went one to point two we kept the patient fully sedated for 48 hours so paralyzed we started on our covid 19 protocol uh, of uh, ministry of health over the next three days, the patient improved significantly with drop of FI2 to 35% and the BEEP to 8, BF ratio 217, pH always above 7.35. He needed, after, after uh, intubation of ventilation, he needed no at IV infusion 20 mic per minute. We repeat critical care ultrasound. He was full and Heart, as you see here, uh, forgive me about the view because the patient is very difficult to, to see a window in this patient. But you see here, right side became small compared to the left side. That means we are in the right track, right side strain uh, improved. And for this patient, the, he needs devofit because of sedation induced hypotension. Because during hypotension and levofit, the heart was okay right side doing well left side doing well no pericardial effusion no pneumothorax and the patient is full that means all causes of uh, shock what we can eliminate in this patient okay attention please despite a couple of days in icu right ventricular free wall was started to increase that means this patient start to complain of a strain of right ventricle in subacute manner. It's not acute manner. He take time for right ventricle to compensate. And this is very important point and the very good news for the patient. Because right ventricle is a must in the management. If the right ventricle fail and they cannot compensate, the patient will die. This is my experience with systemic pathophilization syndrome, which I saw hundreds of cases over the 12 years back. This is very important, I saw in, more, in almost all the cases I saw, the right side uh, wall start to increase inside. That means it is a subacute process. This pulmonary microsrombi and the hypoxemia, it occur in subacute manner, gives the time for right ventricle to compensate. A-line start to appear. still seek pleura but at least this density line started to improve you see even in posterior uh, axillary line with over the liver it is nothing still there is an area still there is an area of p line and seek pleura you you don't expect to eliminate all p line during the icu course but you at least improve the lung score to take the decision of weaning. You see here A and B line, A line and B line, sick pleura, spurred area, A and B line. Area of B line is still there, still sick pleura, area of B line is still there in follow up critical care ultrasound. Next day, this is the x ray of the patient improve really one day later repeat we repeat lung ultrasound for the last time it was almost all a lines there is few areas of p line sedation will stop the patient wake up fully conscious cooperative and connected to c band pressure support tolerated will and the, with proper abg patient was successfully extubated i believe this case is a standard case of ARDS, but in the coming cases you will see a lot of complications and a lot of variability in the presentation of this COVID-19 cases. I hope you get something from this lecture and see you soon in other projects. Bye-bye. Thank you a lot.